August 6, 1945, the United States dropped the first atomic bomb over the Japanese city of Hiroshima, followed by another in Nagasaki three days later. The brutal impact and devastating force of these weapons ultimately led to the surrender of the Japanese government on September 2nd, effectively ending the war. The bombings killed between 129,000 and 226,000 people, most of whom were civilians and remain the only use of nuclear weapons in an armed conflict in history. The fallout from the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki caused lasting radiation effects, affecting civilians for many years after the bombings, leading to increased risks of cancers, birth defects, and other severe health issues in the affected regions. So how does something like this even come into existence? and who is responsible? Well, that's a bit nuanced and involved the collaborative efforts of numerous scientists, engineers, and researchers, but there is one man known as the father of the atomic bomb who has a complex and intimate connection with this powerful weapon. Julius Robert Oppenheimer, a brilliant physicist, led the development of the atomic bomb during World War II, facing the moral dilemma of unleashing unprecedented destructive power. His complex relationship with the bomb evolved from scientific achievement to profound moral reflection, ultimately leading him to advocate for international control and opposing the development of an even more devastating weapon like the hydrogen bomb. Let's dive in. In the midst of World War II, a group of brilliant scientists embarked on a top secret mission known as the Manhattan Project. Deep within the heart of the United States, hidden away from prying eyes, the fate of the world rested in the hands of these daring individuals. It all began with a letter, a letter penned by the great physicist Albert Einstein and his friend Leo Zillard. In this mysterious letter, they warned President Franklin D. Roosevelt of a dark and looming threat, the possibility that the enemy, Nazi Germany, might be on the brink of creating a devastating weapon of unimaginable power. As the war raged on, the urgency to unlock the secrets of atomic energy became undeniable. The United States government, heeding the call to action, formed the Advisory Committee on Uranium, a cloak and dagger group tasked with unraveling the mysteries of the atom. A key player emerged in the form of Major General Leslie R. Groves, a military mastermind chosen to lead the project. Alongside him, a scientific virtuoso named J. Robert Oppenheimer took charge as the brilliant mind behind the scientific pursuits. Amidst whispers and hushed conversations, the project evolved, taking on codename Manhattan. This name was deliberately chosen to mislead, suggesting that this clandestine operation was nothing more than military research happening in the bustling city of Manhattan, New York. Little did the world know, the true epicenter of this covert endeavor lay far away from the city lights. The project's central administrative and research activities were primarily based in the U.S. with key locations including Los Alamos, New Mexico, where scientific research and bomb design occurred, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, for uranium enrichment, and Hanford Washington for plutonium production. Now, before we continue, let's take a step back and look at Oppenheimer's background. J. Robert Oppenheimer was an American theoretical physicist and scientific director. Born in New York City, Oppenheimer came from a wealthy and educated family, and he displayed exceptional intellectual abilities from a young age. Oppenheimer attended Harvard University, where he studied a variety of subjects, ultimately earning his degree in chemistry. He then went on to study theoretical physics in Europe, particularly in England, Germany, and Switzerland. He completed his PhD at the University of Göttingen in Germany under the supervision of Max Born. During the 1930s, Oppenheimer became well known for his contributions to theoretical physics, particularly in the field of quantum mechanics and quantum electrodynamics. Sounds pretty fancy. He held academic positions at the University of California, Berkeley, and the California Institute of Technology. With the outbreak of World War II, Oppenheimer was appointed as the scientific director of the Manhattan Project, the massive research and development undertaking with the goal of developing the first atomic bomb. Under his leadership, scientists and engineers successfully designed and built the bombs that were ultimately dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. The brightest minds in physics across America and Europe were brought to Los Alamos, New Mexico and tasked with creating a bomb like no other the world had ever seen. Oppenheimer's team of just a few hundred soon grew to several thousand, all under his direction as American taxpayer money flooded into the project. 
Despite having little experience managing such a large project, Oppenheimer swiftly learned the ropes, proving himself worthy of the trust placed in him by General Groves. Just three years after starting the project, Oppenheimer and his team were ready to test their atomic bomb. The Trinity test happened on July 16, 1945 in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Oppenheimer watched anxiously from a control bunker as the world's first nuclear explosion occurred. After the bright flash of light, Oppenheimer breathed a sigh of relief. His team had succeeded. His first words were reportedly, I guess it worked. Later, he famously recalled that the moment reminded him of words from a Hindu text. Less than a month later, the U.S. dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, effectively ending World War II. Oppenheimer was said to have been upset that the bomb was used twice, thinking the second bomb was unnecessary. Can you imagine being the man primarily responsible for the creation of such a powerful weapon? On one hand, a person with that level of intelligence and scientific curiosity might have been enthralled at the opportunity to experiment at that level and be heavily funded to dive into the world of science that he was so passionately involved in. On the other hand, there must have been some level of awareness that, although scientifically it was groundbreaking, cutting edge, and exciting, the technology behind the atomic bomb had one true purpose, complete and utter destruction of human lives. It's been said that Oppenheimer's commitment to developing the atomic bomb during World War II stemmed from a deep sense of duty and a belief that creating such a weapon was necessary to counter the perceived threat posed by Nazi Germany. As the war unfolded, Oppenheimer and his fellow scientists alarmed by the prospect of Nazi scientists working on similar projects, felt a compelling need to ensure that the Allies, especially the US, could develop atomic bombs before Germany. Their objective was to prevent the Nazis from gaining a military advantage and, in the perhaps naive hope, to foster a deterrent effect that might contribute to lasting peace without the actual use of the devastating weapon. But let's be real, is there any chance that this guy actually believed that this weapon was funded, designed, and produced to be a peacemaker? A bluff? A puffed up chest show of power that would lead to submission of all who were aware of its existence? It seems pretty far-fetched that any man of that intelligence could actually believe that this weapon was to be used as anything other than that, a weapon. Unless you were trying to justify or rationalize to yourself why you yourself contributed to such a brutal product of war. But let's assume there is some truth to this sentiment, and old Oppie didn't realize exactly what he was doing until it was too late. The story goes that after the bombs were dropped, killing hundreds of thousands of innocent lives, Oppenheimer was filled with remorse and disdain for the decision to drop not just one, but two devastating bombs on Japanese people. A few days after the bombing, he secured a meeting with President Truman where he expressed his revulsion at Nagasaki, telling the president that he felt there was, quote, blood on his hands. The president expressed little sympathy for Oppenheimer's moralistic stance and famously stated to his aides after the meeting, I never want to see that son of a bitch in this office again. Truman also allegedly called Oppenheimer a crybaby scientist and, to be fair, I gotta agree with Truman on this one. You made your choices, Oppie. It's too late to bring morals into the picture now. So what happened to the poor bloke after all this fallout? After the war, Oppenheimer became a household name and was featured on the covers of both Life and Time magazines. In 1947, Oppenheimer became the chairman of the General Advisory Committee of the Atomic Energy Commission. During his tenure, he opposed developing the more potent hydrogen bomb, a stance that drew criticism from those advocating a tougher stance against the Soviet threat. Facing accusations of communist sympathies, Oppenheimer was ousted from the AEC in 1954 and had all his security clearances revoked, losing his political influence. The move shocked the scientific community and it took nearly a decade for amends to be made. In 1963, President John F. Kennedy and later President Lyndon B. Johnson after JFK's assassination awarded Oppenheimer the Enrico Fermi Award. This gesture served as both an apology and a symbol of political rehabilitation for the renowned scientist. In his later years, Oppenheimer continued advocating for international control of nuclear weapons and atomic energy. He passed away just a year after retiring on February 18, 1967 in Princeton, New Jersey, succumbing to throat cancer. And that's that. That was the story of the father of the atomic bomb. So what do you think? Was Oppenheimer truly remorseful or should he have known all along what he was getting into? Let us know in the comments below.